Hello, everyone, and welcome to our session, Delivering a Win After a Win, How Band Dynamical Launches Games on Google Cloud. I'm Yuti, and it's my pleasure to be here with you today. We'll dive into how Band Dynamical has successfully harnessed the power of Google Cloud to streamline game launches and optimize their game operations. We have also delighted to have Shintaro-san and Shohei-san from Bandai Namco with Jack Buza from Google Cloud today to share their unique experiences and insights as panel talk. Before we dive in, uh, let me introduce myself briefly. I'm a customer engineer at the Google Cloud working with gaming industries. I've been working with this role for over five years now. Throughout my time here, I've had the privilege of working with incredible gaming companies, of course, including Bandai Namco. Their continuous innovation and creativity never failed to amaze me. To be honest, my role is, is only to provide this introduction and the game basics. Please bear with me for, for a few more slides. Afterwards, Nisa Shohei Michiwaki will be presenting what's Bandai Namco then, moving to the panel talk. Let's dive into the fundamental aspects of modern gaming. In today's massive global titles, especially uh, Battle Royale games, nothing matter more than seamless player experience. Player demand minimum lag, high frame rates, and truly worldwide availability uh, to connect instantly with friends around the globe. Delivering this level of performance requires a lightning-fast network, immense computing power, and a fortress management on a global scale. Game development is a complex process that can be broadly and technically divided into three phases. Development, of course, including testing, release, and operations. While each phase presents its own challenges, However, the release phase is particularly critical as it can make or break the success of a game. This is especially true for games with popular characters or series as users' expectations are high and the pressure can be immense. Furthermore, once a release fails, regaining player trust can be extremely challenging. Obviously, as I mentioned, delivering a perfect experience with, uh, from day one requires a robust and scalable uh, cloud infrastructure. In addition, the customer needs to be able to use cloud products proficiently for their gaming requirements. That's why Google Cloud and Bandai Namco have been in close communication throughout the development process, engaging in technical discussion from the early stages we have also built up a unified one team that allow us to quickly respond to emergencies on launch day, focusing on ensuring a smooth and enjoyable exp gaming experience for players worldwide. As of this moment, before moving to panel talk, I'd like to invite Mr. Shohei Michiwaki to join us on stage. Let's hear it for Michiwaki-san. Uh, hi, my name is Shohei Michiwaki. Yes, Shohei, like the Dajas baseball player. <laughs> As you can already tell, thank you. As you can already tell, I'm not very good at English. So please forgive me. As I'm going to read from my iPad, if I, I become nervous. Okay, let me start. I have been working in the gaming industry for more than 10 years. As an engineer on both the client side and server side, and I'm also overseeing infrastructure as well. Most, if not all, of the games I have developed over the years use real-time communication. So naturally, gRPC has been the go-to protocol for many of them. Currently, I serve as a technical manager, providing technical consulting and direction for numerous games. 
My favorite GCP products include Cloud Spanner and GK and Agonis. And my preferred programming language is C Sharp. First of all, I will be giving a brief explanation about our company, Bandai Namco, and our journey using GCP. Bandai Namco Holdings, based in Japan, is a provider of various forms of entertainment worldwide, including games, live events, and hobby toys. <clears throat> there are many subsidiaries under Bandai Namco Holdings, and I work for Bandai Namco Entertainment, or BNE for short. We are tasked with producing and publishing digital content and a vast array of entertainment offerings, one of which is games. One point worth mentioning is that BNE is a game publisher, and we like to stick to our role. What that means is we technically don't make our own games. So naturally, we don't have a new house product development teams in order to deliver high quality products. We collaborate closely with development teams of sub subsidiaries and external partners to create and deliver products worldwide. Due to many contributing factors to the increasing complexity of game development, it's crucial for us to build a strong internal knowledge base while maintaining flexibility to share it across projects to improve game quality and deliver products more efficiently. Let me share a few important key missions for our team here at BNE. First of all, we serve as a hub for development teams. Secondly, we solve complex technical problems across multiple projects. Thirdly, we build a strong knowledge base. And last, but no least, we leverage technology to grow our company. BNE began using GCP in 2018, and it has been the platform of choice for many major titles released in the last couple of years, including Dragon Ball Breakers, My Hero Academia Ultra Rumble, and the recently released Tekken, among others. While there are many titles I cannot mention here, GCP has been adapted for many other projects, regardless of scale. And needless to say, uh, there are many games currently in development on GCP. Additionally, apart from game titles, uh, there are numerous internal systems within BNE that operate on GCP. Let me talk about the reasons and the benefits of continuing to use GCP for our flagship titles. There are two main reasons. The first is reliability. The second is data analytics. Let's talk about reliability first. Needless to say, it's made our jobs a lot easier by having managed services. Uh, with high availability and scalability to accommodate frequent influx of users. Cloud Spanner is one of them, which allows for updates and database scaling without needing maintenance. This offers a significant advantage to us since we deploy content globally. Even if uh, even when we plan maintenance during low user activity times, it can coincide with peak hours somewhere else in the world. So, manage services that require, main, require minimal maintenance is extremely beneficial for us. It's not for this that, uh, according to our records, there is not and being any incidents. 
caused by the availability of cloud spanner itself. This fact has made it our go-to database. Moreover, in recent years, there has been a significant increase in titles with stateful game server that maintain connection with users through gRPC or TCP UDP, frequently in communicating in short intervals. These are often referred to as real-time servers or real-time game servers. Before GONES, due to their stateful nature, deploying real-time servers often required maintenance windows or blue-green deployments, which made scaling difficult and operationally challenging. With GONES, scaling is highly flexible highly flexible, as it dynamically starts and stops, nodes and pods based on the number of active users. Since real-time servers need a large number of instances in each region most proximal to the user, being able to optimize this number brings significant cost benefits. Another major reason for our adoption of GCP revolves around having a powerful analytics foundation with BigQuery. From the beginning of use of GCP, we at BNE have placed significant emphasis on analytics. Naturally, using BigQuery as our data warehouse. Band Dynamical Group and its group companies have collected massive amounts of data from various industries, which has enabled us to accumulate various types of data and use it to improve the services we offer. This scale of analytics is not easily replicated by other companies. Band Dynamical Group plans to continue leveraging the data we have accumulated to grow our company. Having a robust infrastructure is certainly a joy for us developers. But it's without saying that the support from Google's customer engineer and the technical account manager, Toki, he couldn't make it today, uh, have, placed, uh, have enabled us to come this far. I wish I had more time to delve deeper but it's time for our panel discussion. So I hope to answer any questions you may have in the after section. Thank you. Great. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> Great. Thank you so much, is, and Brilliant mentioned about us, yeah. uh, but you were just saying we are just friends, right? <laughs> <laughs> All right, I believe you can wait to hear the panel talk. Uh, it's my pleasure to welcome Shintaro-san and Jack-san together to the yeah. stage. <laughs> Hello, uh, my name's Jack Buser, and I lead games uh, for Google Cloud as part of a team called Strategic Industries. Uh, I'm very pleased to be here today with my guests from Bandai Namco. Welcome. Thank you so much for coming. Uh, Kawahara-san, could you please uh, introduce yourself? Yeah, OK. Uh, hi, everyone. Uh, I'm Shintaro Kawahara from Bandai Namco Entertainment. And I apologize in advance that English is still work in process uh, progress for me. Uh, okay, uh, let me introduce myself. I'm Senior Technical Officer in Bandai Namco's Digital Technology Department. I'm uh, responsible for uh, designing online strategies for our titles, uh, choosing, that, uh, choosing the right 
uh, technologies and supporting their implement title uh, into titles. Thank you. Great. Um, so you've used Google Cloud for many games, uh, including Dragon Ball, uh, My Hero Ultra yeah. Rumble, uh, Tekken, which I'm playing right now. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Um, how has your use of Google Cloud changed over these games? Mm. Uh, Michiwaki, why don't you take that question? Yeah. Uh, at first, uh, we were drawn to GCP uh, because of our interest in sorry, because our interest in cloud tunnels manager sharing capabilities. This interest uh, coupled with the desire to replicate uh, our successful experiences uh, with Spana on a larger scale has led to its uh, widespread adoption across many of our teams. Uh, also, uh, when provisioning stateful game server, uh, we used to use GCE. However, uh, we found it difficult to scale uh, stateful game server on GCE because each server would handle multiple, ba would handle multiple battles, but they would end up fighting over resources. So what we used to do is, uh, depending on the size of the battle, we would try to allocate them to server with optimal resources to scale. The adoption of Agonis has drastically helped us resolve this issue, allowing us to scale nodes. And uh, according to scale, According to fluctuations in active users, instead of battles having to fight for resources, we can now dedicate a node for each battle, where they will no longer have to share resources, thus reducing downtime and cutting costs. Hmm. Thank you for your questions. Great. Thank you. And can you tell us, what have you learned from your previous game launches? Michiwaki-san. Uh, for some of our games, we use Unreal Engine to serve our real-time servers. However, we found, it, uh, we found that they can be extremely costly because of the significant overhead of Unreal Engine's runtime. We found out that uh, depending on the machine type you choose to execute your runtime, it can have a large impact on the total cost of operating that server. With the example of Unreal Engine, we used to use N1 standard. However, we tested with different server types and found that using the more costly T2D standard ultimately brought our total cost down by 25%. As a lesson learned, we now compare and test multiple machine types to find the most optimal one before service runs. Our goal is to provide a pleasant gaming experience while being as cost effective as possible. Thank you for interesting Great. interest. Uh, so next question. Um, what makes Tekken 8? <laughs> yeah different from some of your other projects. And uh, Kawahara-san, why don't you please? Uh, yeah. Uh, we have had experience launching game uh, simultaneously around the world. However, uh, this was the first time uh, we have launched a consumer game with a visual lobby system and real-time gameplay for users around the world at the same time. Bandai Namco Studio, a uh, Bandai Namco group company, developed the game. Uh, while they are experienced developers, they had less experience uh, with server development and operations uh, compared to our mobile team game, uh, mobile uh, game teams. Uh, this successful project uh, represents a significant milestone for BNE, and we are committed to leveraging this experience to drive further development in the future. Thank you. 
Great. Yeah. Um, what did you learn from prior game launches for your latest game? Uh, what did you keep the same? Uh, what did you do differently? Why don't yeah. Uh, one aspect that uh, has remained unchanged is our continued uh, use of Cloud Spanner. As uh, we have no doubts uh, about its performance. However, one thing we have learned is that fine tuning Spanner specific parameters, such as interleaving, can have a big impact on the ultimate performance of Spanner itself. Since running this product, we have made sure the architecture for Spanner is planned meticulously before preparing for our launches. In fact, because of the robustness and uh, reliability of Spanner, so long as the configurations are fine-tuned, we no longer have uh, concerns on reliability. Uh, even if there is a concern, we can always easily accommodate the fluctuation of users by simply changing the number of nodes on the GCP console. Another aspect that, that remained unchanged is our stance on providing an enjoyable gaming experiences to our users without any downtime as much as possible. Great. Thank you. Well, I know I've been playing Tekken 8 nonstop since it came <laughs> out, and so Kawahara-san, what was it like on launch day? Mm. Uh, what was the public reaction? What yeah. was it like? Uh, on the day of Tekken, launch, uh, Tekken 8 launch, uh, the entire development team was closely monitoring the global access via teams. Uh, after launch, uh, minor spike in access caused downtime. And the bug in the lobby server also caused some uh, matchmaking difficulties. Uh, however, we have successfully fixed it on the same day. Uh, the server system uh, has maintained a high level of stability since then uh, with only a few minor issues. Uh, we've received positive feedback uh, from users and you, we, we are thankful to the high rating the game has received. Uh, have you had a chance to play the game yet? Yes? Oh, yeah. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Great. Well, launching a game is wildly complicated, especially a game like Tekken 8. How did you do everything at once? Uh, so, uh, yes, you're right. Uh, launching a game is a very complex process. Uh, the Bandai Namco Studio development team hard work deserves all the credit for our success. Uh, our development approach began uh, with client side work and build up the connection to the server. Uh, even so, it wasn't easy. Uh, as we announced at the ZDC this year, uh, we encountered challenges in connecting players worldwide and ensuring they could communicate with each other. Uh, to solve these challenges, we adapted the DR keys library. Uh, this is all thanks to the hard work of the development team. Uh, you can find more information about our implementation in the DDC session. Uh, thank you for your question. Great. That, yeah. was, wonder that was a wonderful GDC session. Yeah. Um, so a lot of the attention for game servers is on compute, GKE. Uh, what role do databases play in modern games? Yeah, about, about database. Uh, the role of databases itself uh, seems unchanged from before. We still use our databases for transactional use and for analytical purposes. Uh, the biggest thing that uh, has changed is the sheer amount of data that uh, we have been able to pick up and store in our databases. Uh, as technology progresses and games are made available on various mediums, 
like mobile devices, uh, consoles, IoT devices, and with the advancement of esports, the amount of information uh, we are able to gather from these mediums, and the response times for analyzing and returning meaningful data is becoming more and more demanding. Therefore, uh, databases are required to become more reliable, more robust, and more powerful to accommodate uh, this growing demand. That's great. Okay, Wonderful. So thank you. Thank you so much. Obviously, generative AI is a big yeah. topic here at Next. <laughs> yes. um, how will Bondi Namco expect to explore generative AI in the future? Uh, Kawahara-san, won't you? Oh, uh, in terms of AI, from my perspective, uh, we are considering using AI to improve uh, productivity uh, various ways, uh, such as uh, supporting the provision of new insight into data, such as KPI. Uh, also, it would be interesting if AI could support optimized server setting to improve performance. Uh, that's my point of view. Great. Okay, so what's next after Tech and 8? <laughs> what lessons did you learn and what do you expect to be doing going forward? Uh, Oh, yeah. Mm, uh, we apologize that we can't tell new title name uh, because it is confidential uh, this time. I tried. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, however, uh, we are always looking for ways to reduce the server costs uh, for our online services. Uh, this allows us to provide players with the best possible experiences uh, and uh, continue to support our title for longer periods. Uh, we always aim to exceed the experience of, the, of our fans. So please keep an eye out of upcoming BNA game titles. Yeah. Wonderful. Yeah. Okay, well, last question. I always like to ask our customers in the games industry this question. What is your favorite Google Cloud product <laughs> and why? Come on. Uh, okay, yes. It's uh, the spanner. Uh, we've used it in Dragon Ball Legends since before Spanner's GA, uh, and over the past six years, uh, we've never had any issues with data loss caused by it. This means we are now freed from the large scale maintenance task of data recovery. Uh, which we used to perform at least once every year. Uh, how about you, Michiwaki? <laughs> My favorite GCP products are Cloud Spanner and uh, GK and Agonis. Uh, <laughs> as for the reason, uh, I've, uh, I've already talked about it in this lesson. Enough. <laughs> Wonderful. Well, I, I love those answers. So thank you all so much for coming here today. Yeah. Let's give them a round of applause. Thank you all so much. Yeah, thank you, Jack, Shintaro-san, and Shohei-san. Let's give a big round of applause to them for their insightful talk. We are now at the end of the session. Uh, unfortunately, we don't have a live QA. However, one dynamical speaker will, have, uh, will be available for interpersonal questions afterward. Uh, finally, uh, your feedback is really important to us, so please scan the code and send your feedback. Scan the code, and one of our experts will reach out to get you started. Also, you can send a feedback via a mobile app. That's all. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.